This episode is sponsored by Arana Stay, the digital guest guide of the future. Say goodbye to the hassle of traditional welcome packs and say hello to a seamless and unforgettable digital experience for your guests with Arana's fully branded guest experience app. Boost your revenue with powerful features and focus on what you do best, whilst Arana Stay takes care of the rest. Visit aranastay.com to find out more. Folks, welcome to the SCR Legends event. Uh, I've been so looking forward to this because we did one in for a US audience roughly about a month and a half ago, and now we're doing the Australian version. So today we're going to be talking to these uh, five or four uh, experts, people that have been in the industry for a long time, people that I value um, in- incredibly. Uh, that will be sharing their experience and their expertise to help everyone in the room. Just before we get going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask everyone to introduce um, themselves on the panel. Uh, Let us know who you are, where you're from, and what you're doing in this industry. And what I'm going to ask the audience to do, if you've got questions, then put them in the chat and then we'll we'll look at them as we go. But the one thing I'd like you to do uh, is right now, just put who you are and what you do in the industry. So just your company, maybe your URL and that sort of thing. And that way everyone can kind of get to know each other and participate. That's probably the, my favorite thing to do. So panelists, welcome. Um, Hi, who, wants to go, who wants to go first at <laughs> in introducing themselves? I'll go. It has to be you. <laughs> go, Yui. All right, I'll start. So, Yui, Yoav, but uh, nobody can actually say my name, not even my mother. So everybody calls me Yoi. Uh, and I'm the managing director of uh, Guesty, a property management software uh, here in Australia. And I also a board director on the Astra, the Australian Short-Term Rental Association. Uh, so I'm also on the board uh, with my uh, colleague here, Bart, and I see in the audience that we have also uh, David is on. So yeah, it's very it's very good to be here, and thank you, Bart, for inviting me. The pleasure to have you here. Who's next? Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Cribben from Holiday Rental Experts and Holiday Rental Specialists. Um, I guess I'm a human. I'm a mother. I'm a partner. I'm a business owner, amongst other things. Over the last 12 years, my team and I have looked after more than 1,200 holiday rental or short-term rental properties. Um, We've helped half a million guests enjoy and create fabulous holiday memories. And we've taken bookings worth over $100 million. So it's been a roller coaster ride over 12 years. And I look forward to sharing some of my hard-earned lessons and um the fun times and the good times as well with you guys tonight yeah amazing amazing your story is is just so huge and i'm i'm really looking forward to talking about a couple of things one will be that sort of hospitality side um and in the business but then also uh the one thing that sort of uh really strikes me is kind of where you see the industry moving forward from here so uh, that'll be a good one uh mr kieran Hello. So I fall into the category of Joab, Joi, with the name that no one can pronounce. Kirin Schweikhofer, Kieran. Um, yeah, I'm um, uh, the co-founder, um, co-CEO of uh, Made Comfy. Um, yeah, we are a short rental brand here in Australia. Um, originally, as you can hear, I'm not from here. So I'm uh, from uh, the little state Bavaria in Germany. And um, yeah, father, father of two. Uh, two girls, got two dogs, uh, live here in Sydney. And yeah, generally um, enthusiastic about uh, innovation, about growth. Um, it's an exciting industry that is growing there so much. We we can still improve and, um, and um, yeah, uh, move sort of uh, forward uh, towards better guest experience, better owner experience, better return. So super excited uh, for this part. Thank you so much for organizing this and uh, i'm gonna say hi here to victor who's in dubai i think it's just so here 
it was in Wach, um, I think it might be in Munich, and then we've got Honey, uh, might be in Sydney. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Ben, how are you? And the wonderful Tracy. G'day, g'day, everybody. Hello, I'm Tracy. I am actually in Tokyo. So this this backdrop actually is uh, one of my houses here. Um, I'm not Japanese, clearly, but I've been living in Japan for 23 years. Uh, the last 10 of those, I've actually been a host um, running, one of, was one of the first hosts here in Tokyo um, and then became one of the biggest. Um, I've had uh, a seven figure business with a, a multilingual staff and uh, we've had, I don't know, close to 20,000 guests uh, over that time. And, uh, and, and in about 2019, I started also consulting, started helping other people with their hospitality. And uh, I, I help people, um, you know, maximize their profits in, in the short-term rental industry, wherever you are in the world. So that's me. Beautiful. So glad to have you on, Tracy. And you know that I'm a big fan of your story. Um, I like the fact that you're creating an experience that a lot of other people haven't managed to do in Japan. And really that hospitality at the heart is at the center of what you do. And I think that, um, yeah, I think I, I'm looking forward to coming in and visiting you in Tokyo and doing the Tokyo Family Stays experience. Really, I can't wait to have you. I've actually had a couple of um, folks recently that I met at the Astra conference last year come stay. So it's been great to reconnect. Yes, indeed. Look, uh, folks, uh, a lot of you already know each other. Some of you don't. That's okay. Um, this is a session for everyone to get to know each other a bit better as well. Um, we're all about working together, working collaboratively. The beautiful thing about this particular event, when I reached out to these folks that you see in the room, I said, hey, do you want to do this event? They all said yes. There was no one that, uh, that turned me down. There were no hurdles there. Absolutely. What can we do? What can we share? How can we help other people out there? Um, and this is how they're choosing to spend their Thursday night talking about an industry that they love and a profession they absolutely love. So, um, panelists, thank you so much for joining uh, and uh, for taking your time for this event. Now, folks, just to manage your expectations, the event will be roughly around about uh, 50 minutes. That's what we're going to schedule. But if my panelists want to hang around and stay longer, you are very, very welcome to. Um, and if you uh, folks in the audience, if you have questions as you go, rather than unmuting yourselves, what I'd recommend you do is just put the, the question in the comments and that way um, you won't drive the conversation too far down one path and I'll try to moderate it as we go. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Bart Sobies. I'm the founder of I've Booked Online and The Accommodation Show. Um, I'm also vice chair of the board of Astra at the moment. So I wear many different hats and my job in this industry is to try to help you all with your marketing, your technology and your book direct websites. So let's get into it. There are four different topics that which we're going to cover today from guest experience to technology to marketing and business growth. Um, we might jump around a little bit, but uh, we want to talk about these topics and really focus on um, what we've learned and what we can apply from that learning moving forward and in, into the future. Uh, panelists, if you've got stories as well, we love a great story, so feel free to share those. Um, and I'll ask some questions and they're very open to everyone on the panel. So it, it's not targeted at any particular person. So if you don't want to say anything, that's okay. But if you do want to get involved, then ask questions as we go. So, um, if we start off with the sort of guest experience part, and this is a, a really interesting one, when we think about short term rentals, uh, quite often we think of it as a business. And sometimes that hospitality side or that guest experience side might not be the primary focus because we need to be profitable. But of course, we know that that guest experience can create our brand. And I know that for most people in this room, it's incredibly important. And even from a technology point of view, Mr. Yoab, the, the, the experience starts off with the technology and that connection with the people that are staying with us. So one thing that we know right now is that the short-term rental market, especially regionally, it's, it's, it's squeezing. Um, so the first question is, are we seeing that squeeze? Um, and two, how can we improve the guest experience to kind of stand out in the market? 
and I'm happy for anyone to jump in and, and, st and kick us off. Otherwise, I'll pick one of you. I can I can talk to that actually, Bart. I think that the last two years or three years of the COVID experience has affected the business because our the owners of the properties have had an expectation that they could get bookings um, in the frenzied market. So we had yes, we had terrible lows, but we had extreme highs as well. Um, and our owners got used to earning pretty good income over the last three years. And in my experience in our businesses in regional New South Wales, we have returned pretty much um, exactly to our figures of 2019. So I'm not sure that it's necessarily an actual squeeze. I think it's a post-COVID readjustment. Um, and further to that, that readjustment has come with the necessity to readjust from a guest expectation perspective as well, because we're finding our guests have higher expectations than they've ever had mm -hmm. um, with regards to presentation, with regards to cleanliness, with regards to um, supplies provided at the property, um, with regards to the booking experience, in every regard, their expectations are higher than they've ever been, uh, which obviously comes at a cost. And that cost um, is, is difficult to cover when you've had three years of ups and downs and your owners have an expectation as to income, but we're really probably back where we were pre-COVID and in 2019. So I guess that's a challenge, but also probably just a readjustment which i've come to terms with that probably we're never going to see the peaks that we've had over the last three years and we need to go back to our basics and concentrate on the guest experience and the owner experience accordingly i'm gonna, I'm gonna let the room keep talking if i'm sure that there's people who've got comments on this um maybe to to add to this i think it's important to also understand that demand is a fluctuating um, um, a beast itself. Um, um, it comes with a seasonal uh, impact. It comes also with certain cycles. Um, we have had, of course, the COVID um, um, impacts. We had bushfires before we had um, other situations. There also, um, when we think about uh, guest demand, there are guests now booking uh, holiday homes that haven't booked holiday homes before. They, they have different expectations. So you have a new clientele. Uh, you have um, 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 varying demand. Um, you have um, a very, very uh, strong supply still. So it's it's just really important to to be close to that uh, demand uh, curve. And um, as we sort of adjust prices to guests, it's also important to to educate our owners uh, around that proactively, ideally, and being transparent on on where the market lies. And um, I think I agree the uh, the past, uh, especially in Australia, we had a few hard lockdowns, but the past uh, 18 months have been uh, significantly high. But uh, uh, the rates and the occupancy rates we are seeing uh, right now in our portfolio is still uh, very, very strong. If you compare this with pre-COVID, uh, I'd even say it is, um, it is higher than pre-COVID um, if you um, look after the properties and you have specific properties that uh, where you know they will do well. Any more comments on this one? Sure, I can I can jump in. Um, what I'm seeing is slightly different from what you guys in Australia will be seeing um, in that I had a very quiet three years, as in I had to refocus who I was targeting, mainly because the borders were shut and my traditional markets had gone away uh, and I had to really focus um, on who was needing my product. I had to figure out what product I was delivering and then who was needing it and actually actively going out and finding that finding that customer. Um, now that the borders open, um, I still have all of that experience from the last couple of years, but I'm, I'm also looking to, again, who is my customer? Why are they coming? And, and figuring out the seasonality, like Kuren was saying, um, you know, looking at what are the high seasons? What are the, what are the events where people are actually coming to your area? And it's going to be, you know, a very local experience. So 
for, for each of you in your markets, then you'll have to, you know, look at why people are coming, what, what are the demand times, and then be doing your revenue management accordingly. And just um, to, to the group, in terms of um, the, the, that there's two, there's one, there's one topic I do want to go back to, which I think is going to be really useful is managing owner expectations. And I think that that's something that's changing, especially as, as prices will go up and down and as demand goes up and down and what kind of returns uh, are our uh, owners going to get. But um, um, if we go back to kind of that, those expectations that we say they've gone up or that they, they've, progressed so people want more is there any way that we can quantify what it is that they want more or have we seen in reviews that people are a little bit more harsh how are you coming up with the how are we quantifying that idea that the expectations have changed in in, in uh, since covid yeah i'd love to to talk about that but um so we've been looking after short-term rental properties for 12 years and over that time frame we've we you know we've still got many of the properties that we listed 12 years ago that we're looking after and the owners that have stayed ahead of the game and have done the makeovers and renovations and continue to look at their pricing and have replaced you know lounges, mattresses, redone their kitchens, redone their bathrooms, they continue to get booked well. But the owners that have sat on their laurels and kept grandma's furniture um, because they were gifted the property in a will or something along those lines along the coast of New South Wales, if they've still got the old fashioned stuff and they or they you know like many of the owners that we all get challenged with that take all their old rubbish out of their houses in the capital cities and put them in their country um, or coastal properties and buy themselves new stuff those people are not those properties sorry with those owners that have made those decisions are not getting booked as often as the properties that we've got that are beautifully styled where the owners have paid for photography, for videos, for drone, for floor plans, um, et cetera. So guests are being able to distinguish between those properties fairly easily online because of beautiful iBooked websites that yeah. they're seeing. Um, they can distinguish online where they're going to have a fantastic experience because the property looks fabulous. Um, versus where they might not necessarily have a great experience because the property's dated, daggy and just not looked after enough. And we're seeing that those properties are left, you know, unbooked or in peak periods left to be booked last when that's all that's left for people to book. And then we get, you know, not the best feedback on them. So as a business, we're really focused on that. We're focused on getting our property owners to understand that the quality of the property is more significant than it's ever been before in regards to return on their investment and you know that all comes back to guest satisfaction and guest reviews really yeah i, I love that answer and that that actually explains an awful lot and uh, that's why i love these sessions because i'm learning it as i go as well uh, Yoab, uh, go for it, buddy. Yeah, look, I um, just kind of to tie to what uh, uh, Rebecca said and Quirin before, uh, and also to the first point that we spoke about, uh, one of the things that we see across the board is a, a strong increase in uh, pricing and occupancy in uh, urban rentals. So the cities uh, are uh, back big times. Uh, in that sense, with all of the business traveling, with all of the events, the concerts, everything that is happening in Melbourne, Sydney. So we see it quite strong and prices are going really up. And just to tie to what uh, Rebecca just said, one of the things that we hear from our partners, as well as quite a lot from Airbnb, is about the gap between the pricing and the experience. So guests are paying high prices, but are they getting the value for that experience? And I think that that's a very important point and ties to, again, what 
what uh, what Rebecca just said, how the how the place looked like, how much is taken care of, uh, the the hospitality side of things. Mm. Maybe <clears throat> to add uh, a little bit on that, also what Rebecca said, because I think it is so so important. If you have, um, um, if you look back, especially um, just after COVID, you couldn't book anything, so anything booked. And a few owners, of course, um, started then and have the expectation anything booked. So why even bother putting anything in there? Or why even doing anything on the property if I get uh, all these returns? Or even why bothering with whom I'm? Uh, who are used to manage this property. But when we're looking at now, we are back at sort of those um, uh, normal occupancy rates where you have still your peaks, but you have your 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 lows. If your property is not in the top 20, 30 percent from the presentation look and feel, you will not be in the top 20, 30 percent in returns. And if the occupancy is in the uh, 20, 30 percent mark uh, during certain times of the year, you will definitely not get a booking. It's almost guaranteed. But I think as a manager, the other thing to think is about like um, how how do you select your properties and why putting in a lot of time and effort in convincing property owners um, of properties that are um, uh, that, that have a significant gap to what um, um, the market really uh, seeks? Um, it's sometimes um, better to turn down properties and uh, to not continue with this because they take away all your time. Um, and at the end, you suffer with the guest review as well. That's against your brand. Uh, and not against the property owner necessarily. So that's uh, really something I, I'd suggest to to review. Does it, is it worth the property count um, to take on certain properties where the owner is is not really um, aligned with your strategy, what your brand reflects? Yeah, I love that. And like you effectively are saying, be a bit more choosy about your properties, about the, the owners you're working with, set the right expectations of, mm. of what guests now expect. They're not just expecting to stay in a spare room, uh, they're, expe they're expecting the full experience of the thing to be looked after. And I love that comment, you know, about matching the price expectations, because we all have these tools now that will push prices up and, and keep on pushing the prices up. But we need to make sure that we deliver to people's expectations in terms of their pricing. Um, is there, I I'm going to keep moving on because we've got a lot that we're going to cover. But if there's anything urgent or anything that, that's pressing that someone wants to add to this, um, let me know. I'll, I'll just add one thing. Um, I recently broke up with one of my owners um, and I just wanted to give permission to other uh, property managers if they if they are if they have a, a manager, uh, sorry, if they have an owner who really just doesn't get it, even if you've given all the stats, even if you've shown, well, look at your property compared to this property. And if they just can't see it, if they just, you know, if they just don't understand real numbers and like they can't, um, you know, they're they're ignoring what's right in front of their, their faces. Then, then really, the only the only choice is to break up with them. So, um, you know, and sometimes it's just it's just when I broke up with the, with this particular owner, it was such a relief. It was like, oh my goodness, they were sucking all the oxygen out of my business, and now they're gone. And it's um, and I don't I don't miss the revenue because I can put my energy into uh, into a place where I'm really getting we're squeezing that profit out. I, I'm I'm going to be a little bit annoyed. I love and I love that for sure. Like you've got to know when to break up with someone. Uh, sometimes it can be quite hard. But I do have um, one question about this in terms of guest experience. So obviously we can get negative reviews, which is not a, not a great look, and it's not good for our business. But in terms of repeat bookings, um, are we thinking about that guest experience and repeat bookings? And how how much um, how much does that impact uh, profitability? Was, was my question asked well, or it was a bit confusing? So, uh, it's, so very, yeah, but, it's very broad. Yeah. Yeah, no. So what I'm asking is, so we've got, we've got people that we want to repeat and to come back and book again. Um, and we need to provide a, a great guest experience, um, of course. So um, we don't want to get negative reviews and that sort of thing, but are you finding that if that the, the numbers are significant enough um, to have to keep on improving that guest experience and how much does it matter in 2023 as a business to make sure that you're looking after your repeat bookings as well as new bookings coming in? It, can I just jump in here? It is absolutely critical for me um, because I had a ton of bookings that were, were, were all booked in 
for 2020 that are now coming back to me. And they're coming back to me, even though those particular houses I may not have anymore, but but they're coming back to me because of the service I gave them originally. Um, they're coming back because they're remembering my branding, that they're seeing my brand and my hospitality brand all over the internet. And that's what they're coming back and booking. So that's absolutely critical. They're also referring their guests and, you know, I've spent a ton of time while, while we've been down to, to really work on their branding so that, uh, so that, that my, my icon and my logo are really front of mind all over the place. And is there anything that anyone's, anyone's doing in terms of, like, if it's a made comfy experience, are you doing things to sort of uh, associate your brand with, with that experience? Like, yeah, that's a made comfy experience rather than an OTA experience? Yeah, I, I think they're two very different experiences. OTA is a, is a platform, um, it's a channel, and um, um, and I think it's a, an important channel if, if your focus is is maximizing returns. You want to be where where people prefer to book. And to be honest, there, there are people that, that, that love their genius um, uh, programs. Some love their, their, their review counts on the Airbnb, and, and others love their, their stays, verbo, home away, where, where we in the world are, it's differently called. So I, I think that's an important part, but then how are you, how are you really found? And um, I think you need to be clear what's your point of differentiation. Um, if you don't differentiate, it's very difficult to, to really justify someone to, to, to come back. Also, um, um, understanding who your, your, your guests are. So if you fully rely on, on one channel, it's sometimes very difficult to connect with your guests and, and, um, and to understand why they even were there. So super important to understand the differentiation. Um, what is your guest audience and why would they come back? And how, how do you, like, what is your effort involved to, to, to achieve that? Um, and also what's the price they would pay versus someone else? So, um, if you then, um, 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 keep that in mind that you, you, it, it is not necessarily just to fill the property with direct bookings, but it's still about, um, uh, generating the best returns for your owner. And if that booking is a repeat booking, good. If not, then I think it's also important to not be blind about that and focus for the sake of the direct booking onto this. But the mix is important and the differentiation is super important. Yeah, I agree with you, Kieran, because we're at the, we're like the, we've been discussing recently whether we encourage guests to book direct next time by offering a loyalty discount. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's been interesting conversations around that because if you're offering, say you're offering five or 10% discount to a direct booking for a return, um, uh, would they have booked anyway because they had a great experience and do you need to discount the property or your commission or your booking fee or whatever it is that you decide to discount in order to encourage someone to book direct from a loyalty perspective? And I'm not convinced that that's ne necessary if the experience that you've been able to create is worth them wanting to recreate. And I think that for property managers like many of us are, that comes down to being pr providing a guest an experience that is the same or similar across all of your properties. So the expectation is that, oh, yes, I stayed at a holiday rental specialist property in the Southern Highlands this year. And we can guarantee you that because you had a fabulous experience there, you're going to go to Kayama and you're going to have a fabulous experience there. And I think that's where the challenge for portfolio managers and property managers lies because we're managing properties in different areas. We've got different cleaning and housekeeping teams. We've got owners who are, you know, fabulous at setting up their properties amazingly. And then we've got owners that couldn't give two hoots as to how their property is set up and don't actually care if they get bookings. So the challenge for us is creating an experience, you know, like, you know, like the hotels can and like Meriton can, whereby 
you know, the guest can be guaranteed of a similar or same experience no matter which property they stay at within our portfolio. And that's my challenge for the next five years because, boy, it's a challenge to, you know, match um, property for property when you've got 350 different cleaners and 350 different owners and, you know, uh, so, you know, I think it's a huge challenge. I, I love that. And Rebecca, you're, you're naughty because you've just opened up so many different <laughs> angles, like so many things I could, I could Very go much. down from loyalty <laughs> programs to, to, to the owners. To the, so like there's a lot to unpack there. And it just goes to show that an event like this is so critical because there's so many elements to think about and so many different points of view about uh, where we could add value. So uh, unfortunately, if we had anything more on that, I'm moving on because one thing I was told is I have way too many questions for this particular session, so I need to do it. We're going to move on to technology, um, and obviously technology is changing rapidly. Um, we've got uh, ChatGPT, which came out, which has just blown up everything uh, overnight and just changed the world. Um, if you had seen, uh, I forgot the name of the platform, but if you've seen the the pictures of the Pope in the pu puffer jacket as well that were created by Midjourney. Uh, just crazy stuff is happening in te with technology, but the way that it impacts the short-term rental industry is uh, very significant, if not more significant than ever. And what I like about the group that's here is I think everyone's using different kinds of platforms, different ways of doing their, running their business using technology. Um, I'm going to start off th this question uh, with uh, Mr. Yoav from Guesty because I was at an event the other day um, where you and Booking.com were talking about technology and its impact, and uh, you kind of put everything into a, a bit of a, a graph to say, hey, these are the biggest areas that we see that short-term rentals will be impacted by technology or places that we need to look at. Um, in 2023-2024. Um, I'm happy for you to summarize it however you want, but I'm really curious as whether you could convey some of those messages and some of those ideas to kick us off. Yeah, absolutely. And and by the way, it's a, it's a, it's kind of it's beyond uh, it's beyond guesty. It's kind of a thing that kind of I would like to think that I speak on behalf of kind of all the all the technology provider in the space because it seems that we uh, short-term rental is in another in another evolution cycle we kind of we came post covid i think that many especially kind of many of the names that i see here came even stronger from uh, from covid that was a uh, kind of uh, let's say kind of one of the rounds of evolutions of our industry uh, and now we're facing a few more we're facing kind of the uh, the regulation side of things so especially especially here in Australia and especially we're now kind of in New South Wales we've seen kind of the impact of the registration process and what it did to the industry so that's that's one kind of area another area is uh, as we said the guest expectations and what they do it's also let's call it the guest regulation if if you want how they push kind of the industry as well as the economy uh, pressure so you kind of move between those three areas the the regulation the guest experience and the economy and uh, there are kind of there are tools there are very good tools now that allows you to deal with each one of kind of of this uh, 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 of these areas and where we see kind of the industry globally uh, or locally as well as globally is that kind of leveraging uh, more tools that allows you to basically operate in a much more efficient way that's kind of nothing new about it and i think that most of the attendees here are using kind of tools that allow them to do that but that's that's just kind of getting even kind of more and more stronger how can you operate in a much more efficient way across the board you know with your channel management and with your task management and with your guest application etc uh, when it comes to a uh, regulation there are more and more tools that allows you to be a, a more accountable and responsible host as well as to basically uh, be more be more professional in that space. Anything from a, a, a guest screening 
to uh, all the smart home devices, the noise control, things that, as we know, especially here in Australia and BART, we also know it from the discussion on the Astra side with the different kind of government departments. They, they want to hear about those type of stuff. They want to see a, a property managers leveraging technology to be kind of a, a, to be a more responsible a, a host. So that's definitely it's going to be more and more focused 2023, 2024, where probably a lot of the regulation will come into, uh, into place. Uh, and when it comes to the guest experience and probably kind of the other can speak even better kind of than me about it, but uh, that's, that's, I see it as the strongest regulation of them all kind of in terms of pushing the, uh, the industry and professionalize it. Uh, we mentioned kind of before the guest expectation, we're mentioning the uh, every time that they speak about level up or leveling the field, that's what kind of a lot of the regulation is leveling the field kind of type of discussions uh, when it comes to uh, the work kind of versus uh, the hotels, but especially when it comes to the guest experience, that's, that's the main area. How do you create the same predictable experience that we know so well from the hotel side? Uh, and uh, that's the, that we see that as the biggest, biggest area of adopting the right tools that will allow you to put basically the human and the hospitality impact into it. Yeah. And it, like we're talking about like things like guest guides, um, check-in processes for them to be able to get through the door and that sort of thing so that you can start to bring more consistency across the uh, disp- uh, portfolio that you were talking about, Rebecca. Um, I I would really love, I would really love, and I, I, Kieran, this is, you're, you're, you're not forced to say anything, but I know that your tech stack is quite interesting. Um, I'd love maybe if people can talk about, uh, just kind of take turns, uh, just kind of what they're doing with, with their technology and where they see the importance of, of where they're looking right now in their business for for the next year. Yeah, <clears throat> um, maybe to 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 start with is at the end the the experience that we um, provide is always go is always a physical experience. It is someone staying in a property paying for that. Um, technology can only enable and improve that. It is uh, it cannot replace uh, that 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 core part. So. Um, when um, you look into your tech stack, it, impor- uh, it is important you, you think first about what uh, what is your current size, what is your vision, how far do you want to grow, how fast do you want to grow, um, what is your brand and your differentiation. Um, but it's super important because um, depending on your size, um, a specific technology helps you and enables you. Um, if you have a, a poor property um, and you have a smart uh, smart TV that you can control with your phone and the app that you build, you might not get any re- repeat bookings or anything uh, uh, value add uh, from a technology. So thinking about you need to have great properties, you need to have processes and training in place. If it's not just you, if it's just you, you train yourself too. <clears throat> it's very important to have processes because their processes are important to then have technology that you then set on top of it that will allow you to uh, to automate or to simplify uh, uh, that. If you have great property, if you have great training and processes um, in place, then technology uh, will, will help you fast. We had to learn this, to be honest, the very hard way. Um, always this kind of, uh, I love new things. I love uh, technology and change. And um, when we started make company, there was all this, oh my God, automated access. Um, all this kind of um, automated control of the air conditioning. Um, um, uh, best is that the, the guest gets a response automated exactly what they need. Um, but the reality was like when, uh, when I think five, six years ago, there was no way any technology could have helped us with that because we didn't have our ducks in a row to, to just enable that. So we evolved and we grew and we now have strict, uh, strict um, processes in place. And now technology that we built um, and we um, also um, have uh, a few a few uh, core core partners that we work uh, as well that specialize in certain fields. But um, for example, if you book uh, a make country property direct, um, everything um, everything is is automated from 
uh, the way the prices are set, the way you then take the, we take the payment, several forms of payment, ID verification um, that is automated. Um, we uh, collect information about verifying the payment IP address. Um, and then uh, all the tasks get automatically uh, created for specific team members. We know what tasks are still open, maintenance items, um, previous guest feedback that was received. If you then contact us, um, um, the person that will talk to you will see in front of them um, on their on their screen um, where you at, um, when is your check in, um, what is the priority, um, any kind of check in on same day or checkout is prioritized. So you will be fast forwarded in the queue. If you booked uh, yesterday, your check in is in three months. There's less priority for you, for example. So that allows us to be uh, give those guests that need support um, because of check in check out um, urgently or any kind of other. Um, um, if they want to make the booking, for example, and then from a from a, a housekeeping point of view, like maintenance uh, tickets can be created by by the guests, and they're automatically then set in the system. And then from a housekeeping point of view, uh, we know when they start, um, when the team finishes, um, and um, any kind of items that are raised, and that gets then flagged to the team. Now, but we can do that because we have processes in place. Going, I'm going to say this word a few times today. Um, that allow us then to to use technology to help with that. Um, and then of course, still things go wrong, right? Because um, it's a human, human touches are everywhere. Uh, so if someone doesn't do what they're supposed to do, all of that doesn't work. And then uh, you, uh, it's important you then deal with that, you surface that, and you have ways to, to highlight any kind of uh, uh, issue internally or from, uh, from guests or from property owners and you address that. I love I love that, Karen. So what we're saying is, uh, figure out your systems and your processes. Figure out what your problems are. Uh, get it get it all working, and then build the technology on top, rather than trying to get the technology and then insert it into your business. I'm going to move on to uh, to Tracy. I think your hand is up, and then Rebecca. I'm sure you're I'm sure you're there waiting for this. <laughs> I, I was really just, I mean, you summarized that beautifully, Bart, where um, it's exactly exactly the steps to take. So if you're new, if, if, if this is sort of overwhelming, all of this tech stack, like what's the right stuff, you know, starting with your vision and your hospitality standards and your mission statement, starting there, and then look at the daily tasks that you actually do. But, and then look at, okay, well then what can I, what's taking up the most time what am I doing more than once in a week and what can be automated? What can be systemized or, you know, what, what can be, what can be ignored? So, you know, taking that time to have that bird's eye view of your business, whatever size it is, whether it's like one property, two properties or 300, but putting aside that CEO time of having a look at what are, what are my processes and where can I streamline it? Is the, is the first way to really have, have a smart use of tech and not let the tech control you. And my, my tip on that, and this is have, having built a few few hundred million dollar companies, make sure that you, if one of the hires should be that person that puts it all together. That person, if they're good, they're incredible. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we start, we were doing things without that person. And what that person is doing is finding those processes finding it all, putting it together and going, okay, I fixed this. Now what's next? It's amazing. Rebecca. Uh, so I think that what Kieran said and what Tracy said and what you said is amazing. And there is so much technology out there. However, I'm going to bring it back to the basics. If your team don't know what they need to do, which is what Kieran said, then all the technology in the world just causes overwhelm. So I've learned that lesson like Kieran has the hard way because of the exactly the same reasons, the bright, shiny lights and fabulous. But if you give your team or yourself too many pieces of tech to deal with at the same time, then I think in my experience, we've found that we don't do anything well. Mm. So we've changed our story up now and we are doing in everything, actually, not just tech, but, but in everything, we're having focus weeks, focus fortnights and focus months so that we can actually deep dive into the tech that we've got and make sure 
that it's given the attention that it needs to have the output that, you know, that it, the intention was for it to give by the organisation that created it. You know, I think we're, there's so much technology that's available to us. How do you choose the technology that's the best for your business is a real challenge. And how do you implement it so that it actually benefits you rather than takes more time than it did to do it manually? I, I, I think that's a true that's a true challenge that we are experiencing right here, right now. And it's, and it's all the time. And I think uh, if I if I even think about the AI challenge that I put together, um, I'm seeing lots of posts now. People saying use all these AI tools; they're all fantastic. Many of those tools have been around for five years, or three years, or four years, and a lot of them just aren't great. You use the ones that are going to be useful. We know the ChatGPT is useful. We take recommendations for people that that know what they're talking about, and then we give it a go and see if it's going to work without trying absolutely everything or following the latest trend too hard. Uh, and like you said, deal with the basics first. Um, uh, I'm going yeah, to move on to marketing, back? unless, yeah. Can I add one, one thing, just yeah. one minute. On this because the thing, what Rebecca said is so, so valid. It is so important that before you implement technology, understand what you want to improve. Now, if you don't know what you want to improve and you can't measure that, then maybe don't even think about it. And if you know what you want to improve and you can actually measure that, um, be true to yourself and keep measuring this. Um, may it be um, uh, your review score or your 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 um, your returns or uh, speed to reply or um, uh, uh, um, uh, call drivers, whatever that is, um, and see the impact. And then, is it worth it or not? Um, should then uh, drive further the uh, sort of conversations. Also, it's always great to to just give it a go and test it. Uh, in a smaller environment before you roll it out uh, to everyone. Uh, so once you know it works, it moves the needle and it makes a commercial sense, then then uh, it's, it's maybe a good good step forward. And don't, and don't be first. Don't be the crash test dummy. <laughs> Why is no one else doing <laughs> We're this? We're always thing? the crash test dummy for our technology. No, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, doesn't that hurt, Kieran? Doesn't that hurt? Yeah, I'm the kidney pig most of the time. Um, you have any final thoughts on technology before we jump on to marketing? No, just completely agree with uh, what was said. Yeah, completely agree. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, um, marketing. Marketing is a super interesting one uh, because because of the way that our industry is, and because of the businesses that we run, we run we have two different uh, funnels that we need to look after. One of those funnels is our property owners um as that we want to pick up into our business and then we've got our guests that we need to market to which are generally different funnels i don't want to talk about that those particular concepts today but i want to talk more about the guest when we're running a property management business um it can be very very tempting just as we were talking before to try to do lots of marketing and lots of marketing activities do uh, pay per click campaigns on Facebook or on Google to get people to our website to book direct. Um, we might be putting money into Instagram to try to create a bigger following. Uh, we might be putting money into just creating really great videos for our properties. There's all sorts of ways to think about marketing. What I'd love to know is how you are thinking about marketing now and the different things that you're thinking of doing as a business right now and moving forward that you think might be effective um, and uh, move the needle as Karen suggested. Who wants to, who wants to go first? I can jump on. Um, email marketing is one of my favorite tools. I have been doing it for eight years now and it is, um, yes, uh, Instagram, you do not own your followers, but my email list is all of my past guests and um, I love them dearly. So I, I love me some email marketing. I, I also do a lot of work with affiliates. So um, I actually have affiliate arrangements with, with big websites. So websites that are where my ideal guest is actually reading. So these are travel and tourism um, websites. And I have arrangements for uh, with with the, those websites that anytime they get a click through and um, they get a commission from from a successful booking from a direct booking and that works an absolute treat so um, uh, so you know figure out who 
your ideal guest and what what other websites are they are they looking at and making a relationship with those websites yeah that, that affiliate one is one that i don't think many people would have explored or thought about but uh really identifying that audience and and, and driving that traffic through and i think email is is a massive one um and very very important completely underused in my in my opinion by most businesses <laughs> but <laughs> um, uh here rebecca you have thoughts about marketing and, and things to do and areas you're focusing on i think we're actually trying to focus on owner growth at the moment mm. um i think well portfolio growth should i say rather than <laughs> um, portfolio growth at the moment we long over the last sort of 12 months 18 months i suppose and certainly currently we're getting a little bit of a shift from um from short-term rentals to permanent rentals with our owners that are a little bit fearful of what the future might hold in regards to interest rates and the like so i think we've you know, and it, during COVID and post COVID, um, we had a few owners leave our portfolio to permanently rent for the guaranteed income. So we're starting to, you know, shift our focus back to, we were trying to look after our guests and there were so many guests and we really didn't have time to focus on growing our portfolio, but now we're, re we're resetting and we're focused on that. And, that the marketing of that is a real challenge, Bart, because um, if you look at um, search engine optimization and the like, and I'm sure Kieran and Tracy will agree with me on this, that it's interesting what and how potential property investors find our businesses. And it's the same in, all over the world. You know, most of it comes from referrals or affiliates, um, as Tracy's explained with regards to guests. Um, and, you know, we need to be unique. We need to be, we need to stand out from the crowd. Um, we, you know, we've got challenges that a group of us have been talking about today in New South Wales, where um, the legislation with regards to being licensed is an issue um, that we don't know whether we're supposed to be licensed, whether we're supposed to have a trust account or what we're supposed to do. So marketing ourselves and working out our niche or our unique selling proposition um, is actually a challenge. And, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, Instagram, we're looking at social, all the socials, we're looking at um, marketing through real estate agents, mortgage brokers, um, signage, etc. Um, but then you've got to, you know, you've, it's, it's a, it's a challenge when you come up against people who are promising the world and delivering nothing. And you know that they're promising the world and delivering nothing, but you can't prove that up front because the, you know, the potential owner's got, you know, lights in their eyes and can see only prof huge profitability. So, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge. I think we have to remember that we've got to market ourselves to grow our businesses in two ways, through, you know, portfolio growth, but also through guest growth. And if any, anybody who knows me knows that I'm always tapping away at, don't forget your owners, don't forget your owners, because the guest experience is only an experience if you've got a property to sell it to them. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And once again, you keep on opening more and more cans <laughs> for, for me. Um, that's I, to do, but you said let's go, let's open up. What does the future hold? <laughs> that's yeah. right. And look, and that's interesting. And, and what, what what you're doing is you're looking at the potential bigger challenges that that you see is the ones that are going to be most important right now. And that's what I want, right? Not just to talk about market. I want to talk about what's current right now. Um, I, you have, I can see that you're about to talk. I'll let you go in a sec, but. One thing, one little plug I'm going to give for myself, and this is maybe a tip for you, Rebecca. Tim Mortimer put on a festival. It was a uh, Nashville, Nash, uh, what, a night in Nashville. And that was a community event that they set up uh, during COVID to work with the community. And now they've got a festival which sells out and every year and it's getting bigger and that sort of thing. But he's got his brand that sits in the middle of it. 
And then the whole community know now of what he does and he's he's managed to differentiate himself. So really cool thing. There's a podcast coming out after Easter. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But that's an idea for you there. You'll have. Yeah, look, I, 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 first of all, kind of you're right. He's doing a great job there. And, and you know, I think that uh, that's to all of you among the audience that operate with kind of with uh, within a, a certain region area that's uh, that can be kind of a great opportunity to cooperate with i think that he's collaborating with the local tourism association mm -hmm. so uh, that's uh, that's a great thing uh, i wanted kind of uh, to mention uh, we see kind of really nice examples of uh, companies that communicate with their database as part of the of the crm uh, uh, communication that uh, that they do i think that made comfy are doing an amazing job in that in how they, you know, in their kind of newsletters and the updates that they're sending. Uh, and uh, we see kind of a few ex a few great examples like that. And I think that that's a great kind of uh, tool also kind of relates to the, or can be related to more corporate type of bookings. So uh, that's that's absolutely kind of great kind of to see these things happening. Love it. Can I add one story to, to share this? Um, absolutely. Um, I, I think, um, so, my learning with um, with, with marketing and, and attracting yes uh, and, and owners and, and anyone, um, I think as a as a business owner, you're always in marketing and selling mode anyway. So whatever you do is about marketing and selling. Um, when uh, we started, um, we were trying to to, to get property uh, owners, and we did we tried everything. Of course, uh, uh, one of that was um, handing out flyers on the street, and I thought, like, look. People can't. Even, I can run after them. I can really like to give it to them. You can't. You can't escape me. Um, it's super scary, of course, when you think a German running after you. Um, but um, sort of um, people were taking them um, bows around us, and I was like, they're so frustrating. And I thought, like, it must be made comfy. It must be me or anything. And then I saw this really, really good-looking Uber guy, and he was like me. No one wanted to go to him. No one. Everyone was going around him and. And trying to escape that person with Uber, Uber vouchers. And then I thought, like, if Uber can't sell in market this way, well, it's not me. It's not my comfy. It is just a shit way of doing it um, 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 and, and finding owners. And, and uh, from there, we then really evolved and figured out how do we find owners. And for us, it was always the path about the best way to find owners is to be found. Um, how do you get found? You provide information, you educate. Uh, Bart is doing this super, super well as well. Jorv is doing this super, super well to, uh, to talk about a couple where I really know about. Um, uh, provide, uh, provide something um, and then uh, just help and, sort, um, and, and be part of that solution that people are looking for. It's the best way to market. It, it works with owners. It works with guests. It works with investors. It works with um, uh, team members, employees, anywhere. If you provide um, uh, education and a solution, in an educative, informative way to whoever you market to, and then you have tools in place to articulate that, to capture people's interest, to then also reach out to them and, and address that. Um, you will be successful no matter what you, what you do. And to constant uh, measure, uh, you constant uh, um, uh, adjust, and, um, and then you repeat. I love the measure. Like you've got that, that, that's another term that I'm going to go to After sleep, process, yeah. sleep, like <laughs> wake up. Am I measuring yeah. everything in the business? And uh, look, I think the other thing that comes out of this for me is being, trying things, being brave as well. I mean, you standing out there trying to promote your business in a super, uh, I guess, challenging way. You, you can't be any more challenged. Like you can pick up the phone, at least you can put the phone down. You don't have to see the person. And someone's actually face to face with you and they're turning you down and saying, I don't want to talk to you. It's very confronting. Um, but even though you've said that, that story didn't work for you there, it doesn't mean that it won't work for someone else in the future for whatever reason. But trying new things, trying ways to get out there, you'll find things that work. But most of the things that you try, from my experience in terms of marketing, it's always way, way more work than you think. And it takes forever to start seeing the payoff. It really takes forever and ever and ever. And then one day, you just everything just starts to get a bit easier. Um, the firework, if you have endless time, endless money, that works. You see a lot of startups that have been funded a lot do that. Um, I will challenge that it actually, unless you're corner store and you're physically there to go out there 
and and do that and pay that person um, um, or your own time. I'd say the digital world, and you might agree with this part, is is more scalable than the, the person on the road with a flyer. Yeah, and that's actually a great segue, Mr. Kieran, into our next session. Now, uh, for my panelists, I want to be kind and further get the audience. We did say that this will be roughly an hour session. I'm going to try to push for another 10 to 15 minutes. If you would like to join us for the next 10, 15 minutes, please do. Any of my panelists, if you do need to leave, uh, pop a message in the chat, and that way I'll know that you need to go. But I'll promise you that by 20 past, at the very, very latest, I will uh, I will let you go officially. Um, so uh, excuse the and there will be no offense um, if you don't stay. We've already got so much great value out of this session. Uh, but the only reason why I want to push a little bit more is because, geez, it's, it's amazing. Like the, I'm, I want to hear the answers to some of these questions. Um, so just uh, to finish off our session, I want to uh, move on to business growth. And uh, Rebecca, you've already kind of led us into this path about how we actually can grow our businesses and things that we do. Um, one thing that you said, which I found, which is critical, which I learned in my career, probably around about 15 years ago, is every time you do something, especially in a technology company, you have to do it in a way which is scalable so that then you can replicate it and you're not doing the same work 20 times. You only do it once um, and from that one piece of work at the very beginning. I would love to know your thoughts about business growth in the short term rental space in 2023 and 2024. Um, there I've heard all sorts of things from different uh, clients of mine saying, hey, the phones have stopped uh, ringing inbound. And I've heard other people say, nah, we're good. And our phones are off the hook, depending on the different regions. We'd love to have your thoughts about where things are going and things that we can do um, or that you're potentially doing uh, in, the, in the next few years to, to create some growth. Or, or, sorry, or things to think about when we are growing. So you can kind of take it as you like. Hmm. Maybe I, I can I can start a little bit. Um, as we, we also across um, uh, different regions. And um, I think um, you generally have um, uh, peaks and sort of uh, lows um, in property growth. You have a when you have natural urgency before Christmas, you generally have uh, uh, more more signups and um, when people are on holiday they usually don't think about having the properties managed so uh, again you need to just prepare for that um what we see is um as a, uh, across our board we 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 have the same number of um of leads we have the same number of interest uh we get a lot of property owners um or property de developers where the, the majority or the big question is around cash flow um so think about how do you uh, tackle that conversation? Um, how do you benchmark against alternatives? Um, we have uh, property owners that are moving away from regional locations uh, because they have to go back to the office uh, and, um, and need their, their property managed. Um, and um, so it's just think about where, where people are, um, and what their questions are, and um what they're looking for and and then uh, be be found but at the moment i think whenever the economy is, is changing it's a great opportunity to grow because people are thinking about it they think about how the property is managed um people are also thinking of buying and um cash flow is is really important um and yield so uh, all of these things um are uh, within our our wheelhouse and um and uh, and strengths uh, as a uh, as an industry so overall just because it changes i think it just means we we need to be be mindful of um what what the behavior changes what when you said benchmarking do you yeah know... benchmarking against what what your what the alternative is right so so if uh if uh um if looking at uh, rebecca for example with i, I know exactly what you the problem you have is people say oh Look, um, I'm going to generate you $158,000 um, because I am really good and cool. Um, and I copied someone else's website. Um, you just need to uh, educate uh, that owner and benchmark what is reality. And sort of, uh -huh. um, I love how Warren Buffett's uh, uh, statement. He said, when the tide leaves or tide comes, then uh, uh, you see who's swimming naked. Um, all of those are swimming naked. They don't have anything. Uh, to provide regards of 
how do they come up with those proposals? How do they uh, come up with these uh, estimations? Um, if it's just a, a guess, that's not a professional proposal. It's exactly the issue we have as an industry. Anyone can make up any kind of figure and throw it out there, and there's no consequence for for those who do that. So think about how do you benchmark against those? Of course, you need to go back data again, uh, and you need to have clean data. Um, you need to be aware of what you see in ARDNA is not uh, the real data. You need to uh, to uh, take away cleaning fees, booking fees, blocked uh, calendars, and so on. So think about how can you clean that up and then provide an owner with this is the actual market, right? And this is uh, how I uh, uh, sort of forecast, and this is then what the competition sort of uh, does. So that's why I mean with benchmarking, uh, be very clear about what your competition is. Awesome. This is growth. Anyone else? I have to comment, of course, because business growth and, you know, my business are looking at that. But I think, Bart, we need to remember, and here I go back to my profitability thing, is that growth needs to be profitable. And we're in business not to be the biggest, but to be, and we should be in business, not to be the biggest, but to be the most profitable. And certainly from my, in my experience, there are numbers of properties that you can manage effectively and efficiently and profitably. And then you go through a period of growth where you have to add team members on and you have to, you know, employ more cleaners and manage more people and manage more processes and the like. So I think we have to be careful as short term rental managers that we have a war chest of money to move through the growth phases of short term rental management but also through the seasonality of short-term rental management because, you know, not every month's profitable in every area. Um, we've learnt the lesson the hard way through COVID as to how, you know, difficult it is to get through low seasons, even though it wasn't a season, but that's what it's like. And also as you add team members on, you know, as, as an industry, we really struggle with forecasting. I'm struggling with it more than ever before um, to see and know what the future holds from a growth perspective. And we need to be able to pay our team. We need to be able to pay our bills and still grow, but not at the expense of profitability. So I ask everyone to, you know, make sure that they plan for their future growth um, with solid expense budgets and realistic growth figures that allow for the costs associated with scale um, and the time that it takes to scale um, will always be longer than you think it's going to be um, and more expensive than you think it's going to be. So, you know, there's something to be said for... Um, a nice little profitable business with 75, 80 or 100 properties under management because the green, you know, the big shiny lights of 300 or 350 might not necessarily or 500 or 1,000 or wherever you're headed might not necessarily be as profitable or as fun. And I hear that all the time is that you you add on the, the, the team members and all that happens with that growth is you're just paying someone else's salary rather than being more profitable. Um, so you kind of, after five years of time, you're wondering why you even bother doing it. Um, I'm aware that Mr. Yoav needs to it, disappear to a management meeting. So folks, I am actually going to call it for, for this particular session because we are going to do uh, one in can your... I... Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, but can I just add, just yeah. to that kind of scale scale situation um, uh, the question that kind of I think the question or the challenge is you scale you becoming let's say kind of a national player or kind of a semi-national player but who's kind of uh, it's not who's replacing but uh, you need still you need to think about the 
the Rebecca's, the, I see a few names, the Jai, the Mark, uh, the uh, uh, Karen, those that know their space, their regions very well. And that's, that's kind of, I think, the challenge of our industry. How do you scale that? strong relationship and the knowledge that they have in their region. Uh, and that's now we're not talking about tech. We're not talking. It's, it's relationship. The, the strength of these businesses. You just need, uh, you need one year running, running around for you. <laughs> no, no, no. You need kind of, you need <laughs> these guys. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, I, I agree with you so, so much. And from my experience meeting, all of the different uh, hosts from across the world. Uh, Steve Milo uh, in, in, from V Trips in the in the US. He's run to seven thousand properties, and he's like, "I'm not moving from this territory. I have to stick with it because we know what we know in our territory. We can't go somewhere else because we're not going to be able to figure it out in Australia. You're going to struggle to scale to seven thousand because we're it's a much smaller country." because of that, but um, completely get it. Folks, we are going to wrap. We are going to wrap, wrap, wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Tracy. Um, thank you so much uh, for attending, for sharing your knowledge. Uh, I can't express how grateful I am um, to get your time and that you're willing to do these sorts of events to, to share your knowledge with each other and to share it with our community. It means a lot. Um, for those of you who watched the live, thank you so much. Make sure that you uh, get engaged, get involved, join the Facebook group, and we will pop this onto the accommodation show uh, probably just uh, the first week after Easter so everyone can watch the replay as well. Um, thank you so much, team. You're awesome, and I'm looking forward to working with you through 2023 and 2024 and forever. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for putting it together, Bart. I've really enjoyed it. I really have genuinely. We, we must say we all missed our um, big Aussie Pete. Um, yes. he's, stuck on, he's stuck on a plane somewhere, or he's forgotten, yeah. or he's or he's drunk, or he's <laughs> eaten too much and fallen asleep. We'll see which airline it was. I, I did my bet, but I'm not allowed to say the brands anymore. Bart said, uh, "That's well, it just gave everyone else a bit more time to get through the topics, right?" No, thank uh, you so much. We'll it's do another one everyone. within. Nice to see Take you. Care. Thank Take you. care, everyone. Bye. Have a fantastic Bye. day. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.